You need one accountant for cash control. The purpose of this unit is to analyze cash entries, register valuation, and presentation in the financial statements based on standards. Let's first take a look at some of the words we need to be familiar with. All these words you need to handle, all these words you need to understand and be able to use them now on your daily basis because this is part of the specialty. Let's talk about cash. Cash is the money available to spend now. It is usually, but not entirely, on a checking account. It may also be the cash available on a cash register, for example, but it's not money to be used, um, let's say, freely. It's money that needs to go into the bank eventually, okay? It is the most liquid asset, cash. Now, the banks. The bank is a financial institution licensed to receive deposits, make loans. They may also provide financial services such as wealth management, currency exchange, safe deposit boxes. There are several different kinds of banks, including retail banks, commercial or corporate banks, and investment banks. Now let's talk about the petty cash. The petty cash has a whole unit. So we are not going to go very deep into petty cash and what it is, but petty cash is more liquid than cash. It's money you can actually take into, let's say, we have uh, managers visiting the branch and we need to buy their lunch. So we are going to go to the custodian of the petty cash, ask for money, fill in the papers, get the money, go purchase the, the lunch, and go back with the invoice, okay? That's what a petty cash is. Money available to use, not freely, but for the purposes of the company, you, you require cash. And so you need to change a light bulb, or you also need to, let's say, buy lunch. Uh, you need a stapler, something for the office and for those purposes, okay? Petty cash um, as most uh, cash is the most liquid of assets. Petty cash is more liquid than cash. Um, petty cash needs controls such as the following. One, you need a custodian. You need someone in charge of it. It's not money on the table. It's not money there that you could just open a box and get some money and run. No, you need a custodian of the petty cash. Two, you need to define a specific amount of money in that petty cash. Let's say 100,000 colones. And depending on the needs of the company, they may decide whether to increase it or decrease it depending on the needs of the company. Support all petty cash fund payments with a petty cash ticket. These tickets are sequentially numbered. The petty cash ticket serves as an authorization voucher and explanation. So if I go to the custodian and say, um, I need 20,000 colones because I need to go purchase some light bulbs. Um, some of them are broken and I need them replaced. So give me some money and he won't, he or she won't give me the money just, just like that. And then the money will be gone and waiting for me to bring the invoice back. I actually have to sign a petty cash ticket, sign it, put my information on it, and then it's my signature over there. If I don't return with the light bulbs and the invoice, that money is going to be taken from my salary because I already signed for it. You see, I am responsible for that amount of money. Now, let's take a look at the treasury. And it says, treasury, the general mission of the treasury department is to manage the liquidity of a business. This means that all current and projected cash inflows and outflows must be monitored to ensure that there is sufficient cash to fund company operations, as well as to ensure that excess cash is properly invested. While accomplishing this mission, the treasurer must engage in considerable prudence to ensure that existing assets are safeguarded through the use of safe forms of investment and hedging activities. Let's think of it this way. Our country, Costa Rica, has a Ministerio de Hacienda. So the Minister of Hacienda is the treasurer. He 
is right now it's the men he is in charge of the money that comes into the government and how to spend it paying salaries um there are budgets for different um ministries and go um, government institutions and he's the treasurer he's in charge of the inflows and the outflows of money okay Now let's go into the types of payment methods, mm -hmm. how to pay, ways to pay, okay? We have the current accounts. Um, you may think of it this way, a current account, imagine someone with um, a checkbook. Do you know what a checkbook is? A checkbook is a book with checks. It's a checkbook. So um, they normally have a checkbook it is numbered, it is sequentially numbered, so it goes in order, and whoever writes a check gives you the check, and they're paying you. That check you take to the bank, and the bank will give you the money that that paper says, okay? That is a current account. Current account equals checks. You have to memorize that. Current account equals checks, okay? A checking account is a deposit account held at a financial institution that allows withdrawals and deposits, also called demand accounts or transactional accounts. Checking accounts are very liquid and can be accessed using checkbooks. Automated teller machines and electronic debits, among other methods. Okay. Let's say, for example, a company pays the providers with checks. Does that mean there is no debit card for that account? Um, not necessarily. The owner might have the card to go to the teller machine. The teller machine is the ATM. It's the machine that gives you the money. Okay. But the owner is not in the company. The owner might be in another country and you need to pay the, the providers now. So you need a check that it has been signed for um for paying the provider because you cannot just go to the bank every other day and and withdraw money to pay providers so the checkbooks do not eliminate the card it's just a way of paying so there may be authorized personnel within the company for example let's say i am the owner of a company um, i have several bank accounts there is one bank account destined to pay providers. So my money is there and whatever money goes in there is to pay. But I'm usually out of the country. So how can you reach me when I am in Indonesia, for example? I went to Indonesia for a business trip and I need to pay my company here in Costa Rica needs to pay the providers. I'm away, won't be back cannot help them, cannot go to the bank, I cannot withdraw, they cannot reach me. So my checkbook can be signed by probably the financial manager. So the owner has to go to the bank and authorize other people to sign the checkbook other than him or herself. So if I am the owner, I go to the bank and say, listen, she is my manager, she's the financial manager. She may also sign the checkbooks. So they collect their signature, right? And that person is authorized into the account to sign the checks so that I can leave the country. I go to Mexico, Indonesia, whatever country I have to be in because I know the financial manager is authorized by me to sign the checkbook. So I'm, I'm off. I can leave, okay? Now, I may also carry the card to that account so I can use a teller machine and withdraw money the same way. Uh, this is an example on how a check looks like. For those of you who have not seen a check, uh, normally it has the numbers on the upper right hand corner of the check over here. This is just an example I put here. Um, they're se sequential uh, numbers, but that doesn't mean it's one, two, three, four all the time and one, two, three, five. They, they are large numbers and depending on how many checkbooks you have, they are increasing. That number should not be repeated ever. Okay. Uh, the name of the owner of the account, the address, normally is here. The date, 
Mm -hmm. When you are issuing the check, which means uh, the financial manager has to pay for, I don't know, um, he or she has to pay for the machines that arrived into the company a week ago. Now the provider is going to come later in today to collect the money. So today is March the 1st, 2021. So date March 1st, 2021. Pay to the order off, and that um, is the space where you write the name of the person who is going to collect. What happens if you have to put the name of a company? Do you put the name of a company? And whoever is the legal um, representative of a company may go and cash that check. And that has been, um, that needs to be authorized in the bank by what we call in Spanish a personería jurídica. Because if it says Los Patitos S.A., um, who can actually cash a, cash a check from Los Patitos S.A. into a bank? Whoever owns Los Patitos S.A. So they have to be registered on the personería jurídica, on the document that establishes who are the owners of this company or whoever is authorized by the company to cash a check. Okay. Here is the amount of money that you are going to pay this provider. Uh, for example, can I deposit a check? Yes, you can deposit a check. So let's say, for example, you pay a provider who arrives to collect the checks from all the companies. So they go to company A, they go to company B, they go to company C, and they collect the checks. They collect and collect. This messenger or collector goes back to the company and delivers the checks. Okay. Now, the company does not necessarily need that in cash. They need the money, of course, but in the accounts, not necessarily in cash. So why would they go cash the check? And then with the cash, make a deposit. It's two transactions. So it's best if you just take the check and deposit it into the account um, that it belongs to. So normally the messenger, the, the collector, will take the checks and deposit it into the banks to the account numbers established. Okay. Now this is the name of the bank. It's just an example. of the name of a bank and these number on the bottom left hand corner of the check are very very important you need to remember them the first nine and it's always nine numbers never forget that it's the routing number routing number is nine digits okay as you may see in this example we have nine digits always nine digits that's the routing number then we have the check number, which should match to the check number on the upper right hand side of the check. Okay, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then the account number, the account number of the owner of the account, the one who possesses the checkbook. Okay, again, this is a number, this is a, an example, so it's a random number. How many numbers? It depends on the bank. How many numbers does a bank provide? And I'm not talking about the international banking account number. I'm talking about the, the account number that the bank possesses in their systems. Okay. Um, it's not the I. It's not the IBAN. It's not the international banking account number. No, it's, it's just the regular account number of the bank. Okay. Then again, the numbers are routing number, check number, and account number. These are the same numbers that will appear on every single check in that specific order. Okay. We were talking about checking accounts, which is something you normally do not know about, something you do not precisely um, understand because you're not familiar with it. Now let's talk with the debit accounts. The debit account you are most familiar with here, it is a bank account which allows you to buy goods or services with money that you have put into the account. A debit account, it's money you have on the bank. So let's say you have 100,000 colones on the bank and you're going to go purchase, let's say, you're going on vacation to the beach. <clears throat> 
you go on vacation to the beach and you want to pay the hotel, the food and some souvenirs with the debit card. Remember, you have 100,000 colones there. The hotel is 50,000 colones. <clears throat> the food is 20,000 colones. 20,000 colones. How much money you have left? 30. 30,000. If you try and use your debit card for 31,000 colones, it'll be declined because a debit card just responds for the amount of money you already have in the bank. They will not give you one colon under no circumstance. It's a debit account. That's what you need to understand. That's a debit account. Money you possess, mm -hmm. which is different from a credit card. Okay. A credit card, I didn't put it here, but a credit card is when you have been granted a loan in advance for money you can use, money you do not possess. So if you go to the same vacation, but with a credit card, you have a limit. You have a pre-approved limit. So they may say your pre-approved limit is a thousand dollars, one thousand dollars. So you're going to use your credit card for up to a thousand dollars, which means you have a loan in your hands every time you carry a credit card. That's why it's so important that you safe keep it because anyone can use it. It's it's money on hand. And you respond for that amount of money. Uh, on the debit card, debit account, it's just your money, not one penny more. Okay. Um, it says when your bank account is debited, money is taken out of the account. The opposite of a debit card is a credit card. Uh, if you make a credit into the account, and this is different. A debit is when you take money from the account, but when you credit the, the account, you're going to give money to the account. Listen again. When you debit the account, you're taking money from the account. Mm -hmm. When you credit the account, you're giving money towards the account. Okay. Uh, money is added to your account. Your account is debited in many instances. For example, if you set up a direct debit and money is automatically taken out of your account to pay a bill, for example, when you write a check and it is cashed, and when you use a debit card which enables you to take money from your bank account and use it to purchase goods or services. Okay. Uh, what is an automatic um, debit? Let's say you want your cell phone to be automatically deducted from your bank account every month because it's easier for you, because you may forget the, the due date, because of convenience. So it is an automatic debit on your account. So therefore, the money is being taken automatically out of your account. What happens if your debit account doesn't have money? The automatic debit will try and collect the money but if there's no balance there it'll be rejected and your bill will not be paid okay because it's a debit account now let's talk about the general cash the general cash they are basically bills and coins used in all transactions accepted worldwide okay this is the first portion that talks about the cash and its variances. Then we're going to continue with some of the um, documents that we have in order for um, in order to make these transactions. For example, uh, we use checks, we use we use cash slips. We also talked about the petty cash uh, vouchers. These are types of documents related to cash. In the debit accounts voucher invoice that contained the summary of the purchase, also if you withdraw money, the term withdraw means take money from. Okay, so I may withdraw money from a teller machine or a teller. If I say teller, I'm talking about the person 
who gives you the money in the bank. That's a teller. But if I say a teller machine, I'm talking about the machine you put the card on. Okay. ATM. ATM is an acronym. Okay. Acronym, which means these are the first letters of a word automated teller machine. Okay. Automated teller machine. Why? Because the teller is the one that gives you the money. So if I say teller, I'm talking about the person. If I say automated teller machine, it's an ATM, which is a machine. Okay. So every time you say ATM, you're actually saying automated teller machine, but you're using the acronyms to that. Okay. Uh, when you use your teller machine, you get a slip, which is a small piece of paper with normally the amount of money you withdrew and the balance on the account normally okay that's one of the documents that is used in these transactions now let's talk about electronic accounts mm -hmm. online banking allows a company to pay its bills and view its bank account electronically the company does not have to wait until the end of the month to get a bank statement. That was very common in the past class, normally in the past, and that's why we're going to start seeing um, conciliations and reconciliations. In the past, you knew what your balance was. You had to be careful with keeping the records um, because you didn't know how much money you had until the end of the month when you actually um, received the bank statements. Do you receive bank statements nowadays? Of course, you receive a bank statement at the end of the month or a couple of days later, but it's just a checkup. It's just a summary, right? You already know what your balance is. You go on your phone and you want to know how much money you've got. A couple of clicks and you already know how much money you have on your account nowadays. In the past, uh, they used some sort of libretas. They used some sort of small books. So whenever you deposit money, you give it to the teller, they would put it into a machine, the machine would print, right, how much money you're depositing and the approximate balance because remember interest. Mm -hmm. And whenever you withdrew money, again, you would give them the libreta, you would give them the little book and the machine would print how much money you were taking away and the approximate balance. But the bank statement will show you at the end of the month how much money you earned in interest, how much money you withdrew, which is the past of withdrawal. Okay, withdrawal, past is withdrew, how much money you withdrew, and how much money you deposited. Okay, or if anybody deposited money into your account. So um, the online banking allows us to do that automatically. We can do it right away. You don't need to wait until the end of the month to know how much money you have on your account, okay? Uh, with online banking, the company can reconcile transactions at any time and keep its account current whenever the company wishes, okay? Now, accounting record of transactions with current accounts and debit accounts. This is a topic that used to start in the past, now we still do it because it's very important, especially in companies. You never know what the company is handling. Let's say 8 a.m. in the morning, the owner enters into the account and there is 100,000 colones. 9 a.m. in the morning, the financial manager comes in and there's 200,000 colones. So you may say, it's, it's easy. You just have to go to movements and transactions and you will find out what the, where the money is coming from, right? That will be fine. But what if it's a deposit and it just says deposit? You don't know who that person is. You don't know why they're giving you money. What is it the account they're paying? Do you need to uh, deduct on somebody's account that they have already paid? There's, there, there's things that need to be done. So the conciliation is very, very important. It's something that started in the past and is still done. Because these companies have a lot of transactions daily. They come in and out, a lot of money. And every single coin needs to be um, managed. You need to know what's going on on the bank account. Every single colon needs to be um, 
pointed and, and known where they're coming from. Okay. So now here is another video, accounting record of transactions with, I am going to start another one because this is the second topic. It's a topic I love, by the way, the bank conciliations, it's one of my strengths and it is very, very important that we learn it and we do a throughout exercise. So this is the end of the video number one, which is about cash. And we're talking about cash, petty cash, what the bank accounts are, debit cards. We're going to talk um, later about the bank conciliations. Thank you.